Hi everyone, this is Frank DeMora with the End Times Research Ministry. It's my pleasure to be with you again. We're taking a look at some great scenery here. I'm on the program Stellarium, and I'm going to show you why I'm on there. Uh, in case many of you would like to download the Stellarium, it is free. I'll show you how do you use it, and hopefully you'll do an investigation like we've been doing as well. So once you get the uh, Stellarium on your computer, you just go over here and you click down, and you'll move this down. You'll move the grass and the bushes down because you want a better look at it. And then what you'll do is you'll come down here and you see this, these little marks right there. These are trees. You click that and you get rid of the trees. And when you come over to this, you'll see the sun there. We want complete darkness so that we can see the stars. And uh, you'll see why I'm doing this. And then what we want to do is we want to go over. You see a little guy here with the star over his head. We're going to click that and you see the uh, the signs of the uh, the stars and the names of the Jupiter and whatever the names will show up there and then what you'll do is you can go when you click your uh, when you have your mouse you can scroll in and out like this and uh, what what I am going to use this for I'm going to be looking for the virgin and so it should be pretty easy to find here just take a second There we are. There's. All right. So this is the virgin that I'm looking at. And then you can blow it up, make it as big as you want, actually. And then when you come down here, we're going to. Uh, well, let me move this up just a little bit because I'm going to need a little bit more. But when you put in the lines, you'll actually see this is what when people look out into the night sky. Obviously, they're not going to see the pictures of it the virgin and, and uh, the lion and all these other uh, signs but uh, you're they're connected by stars all right well one of the reasons why I'm showing you this is it's very important because the Lord has given us signs to look for in these last days now just just so you know um, there are definitely appointed times. I'm going to give you some scriptures we're looking at here, but this is going to come into uh, play when you'll see how it's going to come into play, I should say, uh, when I get into these scriptures and then point out s some things that are happening here. Now, God was in his designing and creating his divine calendar on the fourth day of creation. We see this in the book of Genesis. The, now, the purpose was and is to teach us about the plan, the redemption plan through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. There's no question about that when you do a study uh, in Genesis. You see that it was already being laid out, the redemption plan, our salvation. So, and when you look, it says in Genesis 1.14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day and the night, and let them be for, get this, signs and for seasons and for days and years. And again, this is Genesis 1.14. So when we look at the signs, uh, they also project different seasons that are coming uh, into play through scriptures and prophecy. So God's calendar is based on the moon, the lunar time. And today we observe the Babylonian calendar, which is based on the sun, the solar time, but God's calendar hasn't changed. God is the same yesterday, today, today, and forever. We see that in the scriptures. Now, a key word that we must understand in Genesis 1.14 is seasons. And you're going to see why I'm going to bring some scriptures up to you so that you'll understand this a little bit better. And this word has been translated and misinterpreted incorrectly for centuries. And the root meaning of the word season in Hebrew is the word Moab or Moedim. It means an appointed time, a festival. Now, in the Jewish Stones edition, uh, Tanakh, o the Old Testament Genesis 1.14 translates this way. And they shall serve as signs and for festivals and for days and years. And we see that in Psalm uh, Psalm 104, 9. 
Look at this. God appointed the the moon for seasons. Now the word seasons again is modim, which is appointed times festivals. And therefore we can uh, say that God appointed the moon to determine the appointed time and the festivals. It becomes very simple. Now, in the ancient times, the prophets and the apostles looked to the moon to determine the time of the month. It was common back then. Now, they understood that the new moon marks the beginning of the month and the full moon the middle of a month. This was the ancient or the, yeah, this was the uh, ancient and God's inspired method of counting months. And so just because uh, we are in a new generation doesn't mean that God's calendar has changed in any way, shape, or form, or the signs that we're seeing I'm um, going to be going through here. Now we need to realize that these Moedim appointed times were set in the earth prior to the creation of any living being. Before anybody was created, the animals, Adam and Eve, anything, they were set in place. Now, God had already created a timetable for his children to meet with him. And God does not make mistakes or, mistakes or does he change his mind. Now, in the Amplified Bible in Genesis 1.14, it says this, Let them be the signs and tokens, these lights of God's a provident care. A provident care points to a sign of God's covenant. And these appointed times are signs of God's agreement with us. That, uh, that he is our God and we are his people. Now it says in the book of Hosea, get this, My people perish for the lack of knowledge. Now for centuries there has been a veil over the church producing an ignorance of the Lord's calendar. And I believe that just it's just now being uh, unleashed or unveiled, if you will. And I think it's part and parcel uh, because of this generation being able to see figures in the sky that in the Old Testament or even the modern, uh, the, the beginning of the church, the new church, and we, as we see in the book of Acts, the church that the Lord established with his 12 apostles, uh, these things are being unveiled to this generation primarily because of the technology and the increase of knowledge that this generation has. Now, before, let me move this over here, before when, say, for example, the apostles would be looking up into the sky, they wouldn't be seeing any of, all they'd be seeing is the stars, right? And so... It'd be really difficult to understand the, uh, the message that I believe that the Lord was trying to show us. But this generation, not only do we see, we're able to project the figures, but uh, we can make the alignment of the stars as well to help us discern what the Lord has shown us through his appointed times and the signs, as we're going to see here uh, very, very shortly. But I really believe that this, this has continued to keep the division between the Christian and the Jew, this lack of knowledge, these signs in the sky. And also it's made Christianity to look like a new pagan-inspired uh, religion uh, with, the, with new uh, holy days. And this is not the case. God has never changed. He set these things in the firmament way before uh, we were ever going to have the church or even when the, the Jews were established. So these things have never changed. Now the solar, let me get into the solar calendar. The solar calendar or, or the Julian or uh, uh, Georgian calendar, if you will, and uh, the pagan inspired feast days have been submitted for God's divine calendar and holy days. Much of the pagan holy days came from the Roman church. Now, I don't want to offend any uh, Roman Catholics, but I used to be a Roman Catholic. And then when I started to study the word, I found out that Satan has indoctrinated many, many pagan rituals and traditions into the Catholic church. And uh, this has been a, a major problem with the Lord. 
And when you read the book Revelation, he says, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, and that is laity over the church, which the Catholic Church has done. But that's a whole side uh, study. So, the Roman Church. And again, the reason was to separate the church from its followers from the Jewish people. That's, that's what the Roman Catholic was doing back then. Now, as I mentioned in my, in just previously, uh, in the fullness of times, I mean, in other words, we're going to see complete prophecies being fulfilled, I believe, in our generation. Fulfillment of all prophecy is going to take place, I believe, at least by all of the signs that the Lord has given us to watch. They're happening now, and we're moving towards that seven-year tribulation period. So, it says in Acts 3.21, for example, the heavens have received the, Mes the Messiah, Yushia and are retaining him until the times of complete restoration of all things that God spoke by the mouth of all the holy prophets from ages past. Now one area that the Holy Spirit is trying to restore in the church is the festivals of the Lord. The Lord never meant to remove the festivals. Yes, we're the law uh, that gets into the law issue, but when you study the, the, the scriptures, you'll find out that the Lord never intended us to just cancel out the festivals. We were supposed to honor these festivals. Now, in most Bible festivals, is, or in most Bibles, festivals is translated as feasts. Now, let me quote this. And God spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. They're not men's feasts. They're not the Jewish feast. They're not just the Gentiles' feast. They're God's feasts. These things are supposed to be continually observed. Now, these are the feast of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their season. Read Leviticus 23, verses 1 and 2 and 4, what I just read to you. We need to take special note that these feasts are not called the Jewish holy days, but God calls them my feast. And once you understand this, you have a whole different perspective on, you know, observing uh, what we're supposed to be reserve, or observing. Even the, even the church, if you're not Jewish, should be doing this. Because they're the Lord's feast. The feast of the Lord. The word seasons, now let's get to that. The word seasons, again, is the Hebrew word, as I already mentioned, moedim, which is the appointed times and the festivals. They are intended for all the followers of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, both the natural branches and those which have been grass grafted in. And you'll see that in Romans uh, chapter 11. Now, these appointed times and festivals were given to Israel and were commanded to be observed without, well, throughout their generations forever. Exodus chapter 12, verses 14 and 17, and Leviticus chapter 23 talks about that. Now, when the children of Israel left Egypt, many Gentile people left with them. They were called foreigners or sojourners and also observe the appointed times and festivals in, or feasts. Now, when a Gentile believer observes the feast that 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 person is exercising the rights uh, of citizenship. And you can see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, as well as observing God's commandments. So don't feel like you're breaking anything here. All we're doing is carrying on what God wants us to observe. These uh, Moab's appointed uh, seasons that we're supposed to be observing. So when you learn these feasts, you learn of God's ways, not, not man's ways. What we're doing are God's ways and his covenant. Now remember, a covenant is an agreement between two people. 
And therefore, each feast, there is a promise from God establishing his covenant with us. And a lot of people don't even know this. If we don't understand or have knowledge of the feast, then we don't know the promise that God has given us. Now, most of us lead very, very busy lives. I'm busy. Uh, you know, my friends are busy. My other pastor friends are busy. We're all, we all have things that we have to do during the week and everybody's busy and we carry appointed books so that we don't forget our schedules in many cases and iPods and we put all these schedules and their appointments. Now in a way God has his own appointment book or his own notebook pad or whatever you want to say. Notes on a computer, notes on an iPad or notes in a phone in this new generation but their appointments the book in heaven, which he schedules specific and special appointed times. Now get this, worship, and fellowship with him. On these special appointed times, his presence will be especially revealed to us. And that's what I'm going to show you here. And I really believe that we're seeing something and I'll let you determine that. Now, of course, God wants to meet with us every single day, and I would, I would say, you know, not just looking at uh, the signs in the sky every day, but reading the word of the Lord, because when you put both of these things together, you'll get the fullness of what God wants to show us. But there is a special blessing that comes when his children meet him on the appointed times and the feast that he... Uh, perpetually set in his word. He put it there for us. Not to hide it, he's revealing these things to us, especially in these last days. Now in Leviticus, for example, and again in chapter 23, God lists the appointed times of the weekly Sabbath and the seven feasts of the Lord celebrated throughout the year. Now each feast points to Yeshua's past, present, and future. He's laid out the whole scenario for us and is a picture of the redemptive work, as I said before, in our lives. Now, the seven feasts are celebrated in two different seasons, which correspond to the two uh, archaeological seasons. In Israel, there is a time of rain in the spring, the former rain, and a time of the rain in the fall, the latter rain. And this division relates to two appearances that Messiah is to make on the earth and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and former rain unto the earth read Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 which I just read to you there so we have the first four festivals these appointed times that the Lord told us to watch they were completed by Jesus on his first coming and there's three left that haven't been fulfilled yet. And we uh, believe that the next one will be happening at the Feast of Trumpets. And this is where this comes into play. Because the Lord did show us something uh, concerning these last days. Now, the four spring festivals are the, are the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of the First Fruits, and the... Of course, the last one out of those four was Pentecost, 50 days later, uh, when the Lord's Holy Spirit fell on the church and is dwelling in us now and anybody that accepts the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the work of the Messiah, Yoshia, during his first coming is seen most clearly in these feasts as related to the former reign. Now, when we get in... Uh, to Matthew, for example, Matthew chapter 24, the disciples asked our Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, what would be the sign? Again, because the Lord, remember, in Genesis, he said, I'm going to set signs for you. And they asked him about the signs. All right, They weren't ignorant of it. They wanted to know the signs. And the Lord was laying out what was going to be happening. And he tells them in verse 36, but of that day and hour no man knoweth. And you, this is a complete different study here because this was a Jewish idiom. And when you go into my website 
either at BibleProphecyMan.com or EndTimesResearchMinistry.com, you'll see the thief in the night. When you click on that, you'll see a complete write-up about the thief in the night, about the traditions and this statement that the Lord made about not knowing, nobody knows the day or the hour, uh, but you'll understand there's a whole different meeting with, with the Jewish idiom there that the, the Lord was just saying to him, and this is just very quickly, the Lord was saying to him, my father knows because during the customs of the Jewish religion and the Jewish uh, people, the Father was preparing everything. So when Jesus said, nobody knows, you know, only my Father, he was signifying not that he doesn't know any of these things, uh, but it was the Father who was preparing everything uh, for the wedding or the feast of the trumpets, if you will, as you're going to see here in a second that we're going to be talking about this woman. So in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says this, The secret things belong to our Lord, our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. Those people who accept Christ as their Savior, uh, we understand the unveiling is brought to us, the darkness or the scales on our eyes are removed and we see the things that the Lord is trying to show us including his appointed times and the signs in the sky or in the heavens now let me give you another example of this Paul the Apostle wrote in 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 concerning the signs if you will but listen to what he says but of the times and the seasons remember the festivals the appointed times Brethren, you have no need that I write to you. Why was that? It's because he was speaking to the Jewish people. They understood about the signs uh, and the appointed times and these festivals that the Lord told the Jews to observe. Right? So the Gentile believers in the first century were attending in the synagogues. They observed the Sabbath and the feast. Therefore, knowing their prophetic significance. Yet... Today's church is really ignorant of most of what I'm saying here today. And when you mention anything about signs in the sky, a lot of people will even say to you, well, you're getting off into the false doctrine. Well, I'm showing you scriptures right there in Genesis where the Lord had revealed it to us. All right, now. Let's again go in, and I want to show you the scripture in Revelation. Now we're going to get into this in Revelation again. And this is chapter 12, starting with verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. So here's a woman, right? And the moon under her feet. Now right now, the you don't see that here, but because I'm going to be putting up some other information for you so that you'll understand it, and you can do this for yourself when you download it. So, going on, it says, And the moon under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of twelve stars. Right? So, here's her head, where the stars, we're going to be talking about that. And she, being with child, carried travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. So, this woman is going to be with child, right? Now keep in mind, this is in the book of Revelation, so it's things to come, signs, the appointed seasons that these things are going to take place. Now in verse 3 it says this, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, heaven, the seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Now we know that the dragon is who? Satan, right? So, we know that during this time, and this is when Satan will appear, and as you see in verse 4, as I'm going to read it, And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. 
And so this is at the period, now three and a half year into the seven year tribulation, where Satan is cast out to the earth. He incarnates himself into the Antichrist, and you actually have Satan in the form of a man, Antichrist, walking around this earth. Now, what I'd like to do is to show you last year when I was talking about the Feast of Trumpets. Many of you know that. You could do a research, a Google search, Frank Damore, the Feast of Trumpets, 2012. We saw this figure of a woman, virgin, and many of us thought that this was going possibly be the rapture. Now, in no time am I ever going to set a date. I want everybody to know that. But one of the things that I want to encourage everybody is because the Lord did talk about the signs and the seasons. These are appointed times and he wanted, we were supposed to observe and keep on a watch that whenever we see anything that simulates very, very, very close to what the Lord had shown us in his scriptures, that's when you should be paying a lot of attention. So with this, again, we're on the stellarium here. Let's go over now, and we're, when you go over to the, make your cursor go all the way over to the left, and you'll see a date here where you can put in, okay? And uh, let me just go over here, and we're going to put in 2017, right? Now, let's go into, we're going to go into... The ninth month, October, and we're going to put in, let's go over to the, the 23rd, if you will. Now, you notice that when you did that, because we're in 2017, things moved around. So, now what you can do is you can just, you just play with that. You see the woman here. Right there? Well, you could bring her into play. Sometimes you got to just make it the right. There you go. So there it is right there. So here's the woman. And if you, you want to just get it like this out of the way so you can see the. And then what you can also do is uh, make it bigger or smaller. But for this purpose, let's just take it here because I wanted to show you this. Now, in this, this particular time here, and you'll notice that the Feast of Trumpets, by the way, during this 2017 year is very close. One day, uh, the Feast is on a two-day period there, the Feast of Trumpets. I believe it's on the 22nd and the 23rd. Very, very close, right on the mark. All right. So at this time, what we see here is this. Now, last year, what we didn't see, uh, and many, as I said, they thought that this was going to be the, the rapture of the church or possibility of it. Of course, uh, at least in my ministry, I never gave a date. I just said, let's observe, let's watch, just in case. We want to be ready, all right? You don't want to be caught as a thief in a night, as the Lord uh, has shown Paul the Apostle. So now what we have here is, let me back this up a little bit. We're going to go, as you can see where the sun is right here, we're going to move it away from the Feast of Trumpets, and we'll stop right there. So uh, there we have, let's, now I'm going to play it again and watch the sun, and as we get closer to the Feast of Trumpets, well, let's go back the other way, I'm sorry. And 17 to 18, look at the sun, how the sun's moving down here, and it's going towards the shoulder. There's right there on the 23rd. So we have now, take a look at this, we have the sun clothing the woman. Now again, look at Revelation chapter 12. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman with the sun, with the sun and the moon under her feet. Well, there's the sun. And where's the moon? It's right under her foot. Same time around the Feast of Trumpets. All right? Now, what's interesting is you have Jupiter here that when you make the alignment, now if you move it out away from the Feast of Trumpets, you'll see that Jupiter also moves, and it's not in that, it won't be in that womb area anymore. But when you get into the 
Feast of Trumpets dates, all right, you now have the woman in the womb. Now, just let me show you this. When somebody looked at the picture, say, well, the Jupiter is out here, the womb is over here. But let's take away, if you will, let's take away what excuse me, I got the wrong one here. Let me take away the picture. Now you see there's the womb. All right, This is uh, right where it's supposed to be, like the woman with child. So for the purposes of this, we're going to put the woman back so you can actually see it. Now keep in mind, the, the early church and, and those before this generation couldn't see what we're seeing. But there it is, the woman clothed with the sun. We see that it's in the area of the womb with the, with the moon below her feet. Now, what we didn't see last year, and it doesn't appear, uh, is the fact that, take a look above her head, because it says in this scripture, the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you have the planets align, uh, 10, 11, 12. So above her head, you have a crown of 12 stars. That didn't appear last year. Now, as I said, you can get this uh, planetarium program on your computer. You can get it for free. And I've checked uh, with friends of mine from the ministry uh, that are really close with me. I've checked. He's checked the dates, the span of 100 years, and this alignment happens every year in September or October around the Feast of Trumpets, and sometimes twice in a month. And during the research, at best, uh, what we're looking at, uh, couldn't find where we could find 100 years before Israel was reinstated as a nation in 1948, and a hundred years afterwards into the future, all right? And most of the alignments don't include what? They don't include this, the 12 stars crowning her head. So very, very interesting. So what we're seeing here so far is identical to Revelation chapter 12 uh, that we're reading about the woman clothed with the, the, uh, the sun, She's got Jupiter in the womb, the moon under her feet, and the crown. Very, very interesting. Now, when you do a uh, when you do a check here, you will also find that when you go into uh, when you do a moon. Let me let me show you this here. Let me go in and put in search. Uh, full moon. Well, I don't, uh, something. I'm not doing something right here. Of course, I'm just learning like everybody else about this. But there is a, uh, let me go into, let me get out of this. And I'm going to go into another, one of the things that I did with a Christian friend of mine the other day. Let me get into that. And I'll show you that not only is all of this in the right spot, but also there is a new moon that will be showing up during this time. And so based on uh, the Jewish, the ways the Jews look at everything with the, with the new moon, this is when the Feast of Trumpets will be going out. So let me get out of here for a second. Okay, this is, this is what I wanted you to see. I don't know, I haven't really uh, looked into it, but if we move the moon over here and zoom in, we'll see that uh, it's a new moon in September, so that would be Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Trumpets, and, and uh, the new moon. So that new moon, so that's a possible, right? Possible, possible. There you go. So everything is identical. Everything is lining up. It is very, very interesting. Now, 
Nobody is going to set any dates. But what I am trying to show you is that you need to be paying attention uh, primarily uh, because you're starting to see these things take place. I, they're lining up identical, and it doesn't. It's not going to happen for hundred. At least the, the evidence that we have so far, we don't see this uh, showing up hundreds of years again. Now, why am I saying this? Because the Lord told us in Matthew chapter twenty-four that this generation will not pass till all these things take place. So, if they didn't appear for another hundred years, just a hundred years, let's go that far. That would mean that the generation who was now alive, the generation that sees all these signs, would not be alive anymore, all of them, and then it would the prophecy couldn't be fulfilled. So we know that it's very, very near. Is it going to be 2017 where Satan is cast out of heaven as we see here? And to go after the church, I believe that there's a twofold meaning here because the Jews are going to be running away from the Antichrist into this in, into uh, Jordan and the uh, city of Petra. And we know that the Antichrist goes after him. We know that God is going to uh, send uh, an earthquake and swallow up those people that are going to try to kill the, Z the Jews. But these things are things of the future. Now, if Satan is cast out in the middle of the seven-year tribulation, and we see that this taking place with everything running identical, and this is about Rosh Hashanah of 2017, go backwards three and a half years, and you end up in a 2013. And since we're supposed to be watching for these uh, these signs and whatnot, then you also, we really, really need to be paying attention what's going to happen or what may happen on the Feast of Trumpets of 2013. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to give any dates and say, yeah, we're going to get raptured out of here. What I am saying is, please, don't discount the possibility that this could be that appointed time, that appointed season that God has shown and ordained as we see in the book of Genesis. Let us be diligent in the word of the Lord. Let us seek God's knowledge and his wisdom, not man's wisdom, not Frank DeMore's wisdom, or not anybody else's wisdom. We seek the Lord's wisdom and his guidance. The comforter is showing us things in this generation that we have never seen before. And I, for one, do not think that it is a coincidence that the crown of thir our 12 stars is above the woman and the sun clothed with the sun and Jupiter there and the moon underneath and it happens to be a new a new moon at that same time so with this let me just say this if any of you want to add what I've been saying or if you have other information uh, that you want to share with me that I can put up and share with everybody we're all looking for the truth that those that love the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to do is email me at fjdemora at gmail.com and I'll post that for you. God bless.